Hey there, super friends. In this video, I'm going to show you some neuroscientifically proven methods that you can use to easily memorize the entire hiragana or any other writing system out there in minutes or hours, not days or weeks. And actually remember it. Oh, and stick around to the end because I've got a list of my top 75 superhuman hacks from interviewing nearly 200 of the world's top performers and health experts, many of which you can implement today to supercharge your learning of Japanese, optimize your brain, your health, and much, much more. Let's face it, learning a new language can be daunting, even if that language uses the same old Roman alphabet that we're all used to. But what about other languages? Languages like Russian, Hebrew, Chinese, or Japanese, which either use a completely different alphabetical system or an entirely different logographic writing system. So many people take one look at these writing systems and they completely give up on learning the language before they even start. But it doesn't actually have to be that hard. As an expert in accelerated learning with over 150,000 students to date, I've not only used these techniques to become literate and conversational in four completely different languages myself, but also I've watched my students apply these exact same techniques to incredible feats of memory, such as memorizing as many as 60 kanji characters in a day, or tacking on a fifth, sixth, and seventh language to their repertoire. So today, we're going to start off with the Japanese system of hiragana, demonstrating how you too can quickly and easily memorize any type of alphabet or logographic character. In order to do something like this, you have to first invest in upgrading your memory skills. After all, I'm not going to surprise anyone when I say that the way they teach in school with either boring rote memorization or silly gimmicks like singing a song, well, that's about the least effective and slowest way of learning to memorize new information. Instead, what you need is an actual method, a framework for memorization that relies on the evolutionary blueprint of what the human brain is good at, making it quick and easy to learn just about everything and anything you want in order. Once you have that method, you can literally apply it to anything you want with just minor adjustments or adaptations. That method has three basic steps. Number one, visualization. Our brains are subject to something called the picture superiority effect. This means that even if you think you're an auditory or tactile kinesthetic learner, research has proven that in fact, your brain remembers pictures better than anything else. Rule number two, connection. Our brains operate by something called Hebb's law, which states that neurons that fire together, wire together. In plain English, this means that connecting new information to information that we already know makes it much more memorable and relevant to our brains, which will place a higher priority on it. And finally, rule number three, location, location, location. Our brains are insanely good at remembering locations. This is why the memory palace technique, a system of creating unique, memorable pictures, and then imaginarily placing them into real world places that your brain already knows is used by every single memory champion and world record holder. In fact, I recently put out a video explaining the exact neuroscience behind the memory palace technique and how the heck it works so incredibly well. Okay, now that we understand these three basic tenets of memory improvement, let's try it out by tackling some real life hiragana characters. It's important to note that I'm approaching this from an advanced memory perspective. You see, before writing this video, I had actually never even looked up the hiragana characters, much less tried to memorize them. And this really just underscores the fact that with the proper memory techniques, you literally can learn anything, even if 
It's something of which you have no prior knowledge or exposure or understanding of. So if it offends you that a gaijin like me with no prior knowledge of the Japanese language is teaching you how to hack it from zero, well, you might want to stop watching now. Still with me? Great. As I go along, I'm going to remember our first rule and create a unique visual symbol for each hiragana character. These symbols will use interesting, bizarre, and strange imagery to make it interesting and original for my brain. In fact, I might even choose to use violent or sexual imagery. Now don't worry, these images are just for you. Unless you're teaching them online like I am, you don't have to share them with anyone else. As I do this, by the way, I'm going to be extra careful to connect these images to other pieces of knowledge that I already have, creating at least two or three connections to pre-existing knowledge. You'll remember that that is rule number two. I'll also try to incorporate visual elements that I already know, or even connect it to people or things that are emotionally relevant for me personally. That's why any list of visual markers that I could create for you is ultimately not as successful as you just learning how to do all of this yourself. Finally, to obey rule number three, I'll find a logical way to organize these visualizations into a location that I know very well, such as my favorite grocery store, my bedroom, or even an entire house or city. The first thing I would do when learning a new character system is take a page out of my friend Zach Evans' book. When I interviewed Zach, who's an expert on how to super learn piano, he emphasized the importance of planning ahead and structuring out your learning. In this case, I would probably think to myself, how do I want to organize this new information that I'm about to learn? Do I want to know the hiragana in a specific order or organize it by the sound it makes? Depending on what my answer to that question will be, I would probably plan to organize my memory palace accordingly. In my case, I'll be honest, I'm probably not actually going to learn Japanese. I already speak four languages and Japanese isn't the next one I wanna learn. And so I'm just going to organize them wherever they're easiest to remember for me. I'll pick a random building that I know well, such as the WeWork location that I work out of, and I'll start organizing things. You'll probably want to do it very differently if you're watching this video though, because you probably do want to learn Japanese, and good for you. Now, on to some real examples. Let's start with an easy one, he or he, which looks like this. Remember how I said that violent, inappropriate, or sexual imagery works best? Well, here's how. I want to link this to my pre-existing knowledge of that sound, he. So I want you to imagine a very, very pretty lady with makeup and long curly hair, but she's sitting in a hospital bed. She's unconscious after some kind of accident. Can you see her? Okay, now imagine that the doctor walks in and she's consulting with one of her medical residents. And she says to the resident, I need you to make sure that the patient is comfortable, that she's happy, that everything is going well for her. But then the resident looks at the bed, notices a little triangular tent shape sticking up and very uncomfortably corrects the doctor. Um, doctor, I think you meant he. This visualization is wildly inappropriate for a lot of different reasons. Of course, it is just a silly example which fails to respect the patient's absolute right to identify as whatever gender they want to, but it's also pretty funny, right? I've connected it to my pre-existing knowledge of the word he and done so in a very, very awkward and memorable situation that we can all remember with ease. The symbol helps me connect the sound, he, to that shape, a little tent shape in the bed. Now I'll place that awkward little visual marker in a place in my memory palace where that makes sense to me. For example, in the bedroom, on the bed. Or if I'm using my office, maybe at the front desk. Easy, right? Now, before we go on to the next example, I want you to stop and think for a second. How is this different than the way that you've been learning up until now? Is it more interesting and engaging than trying to memorize a list of confusing characters? 
or less? Let me know in the comments below what you're thinking. All right, on to the next one. Se or si, which looks like this. Whoa. When I look at that symbol and I try to make a visualization out of it, I immediately look at it as a little curly nose and a pair of frowning lips on the bottom and a big line through where the eyes should be. I can use violent imagery to imagine that someone has just had a sword fight with a Japanese samurai and took a slash right through the eyes, leaving him unable to see. Wow, that was even easier than our first one, right? Or how about no, which looks like this symbol. Come on, you've got this one. It's a big no smoking sign. It's posted up at your favorite restaurant with a big red circle and strike through. Go ahead, visualize that. Now make that connection to the sound no. Now you're getting the hang of it. What I hope you'll realize as you're doing this is that it doesn't actually matter what visualization you choose or what each character actually looks like. As long as you are able to make a clear, logical connection between what it looks like to you and what it sounds like and means in Japanese, you are all set. And these can be completely made up. In fact, they should be. Now, let's get creative and try a trickier one. Yo. That one looks like this. Now, this one doesn't really look like anything that relates to the word yo, does it? Or maybe it does. See, to me, it kind of looks like the symbol for a person sitting in a wheelchair, but reaching his or her arm out. So what if that person was a gang member, complete with all kinds of tattoos, sitting in a wheelchair from a previous shootout? Then. What if he's about to greet one of his fellow members by doing their special secret handshake, hence the outreached arm? Yo, he says in respect. Are you getting it? Next up, let's talk about the diacritics, digraphs, and other ways in which these symbols change and are modified. You see, if you were learning this with the boring, ineffective rote memorization system, you would be really thrown off by the fact that this symbol isn't he, the one we just learned, it's actually B, because of the addition of something called a dakutin or a handakutin, that little set of marks that accompanies many letters, like those two little hashes or these things. But you see, the beauty of this system is that leveraging Hebb's law, it's actually easier to remember similar symbols, and it's not confusing. See, all you need to remember is that when he gets the diacritic, which we can imagine as a little action symbol, like in comic books, then it actually turns into B. Now we can create a whole new visualization to remember that because it is a little bit confusing. See, I just imagine that all of a sudden, a hospital patient pitches a tent, like in our last visualization, to which the nurses all yell, oh my, you shouldn't be in the ladies ward. We have to move you to a private ward. Is it politically correct? No. Does it work to help you remember the relationship between he and B? Heck yeah. By leveraging our new piece of knowledge about he, it's actually easier to memorize these seemingly confusing similar characters. Using this exact process, you could easily memorize the entire hiragana in a very short time by starting with the simple monographs or gojuan and moving to the digraphs, diacritics, and then the digraph, digraphs with diacritics. Whew. Each time, you would simply add a new story and a new visualization to build on to your base understanding of the monographs, making it easier to learn the more confusing versions of it. You could find different meanings for each of the dakuten and handakuten, ranging from motion lines to a little eyeball, and so on. You'd create visualizations like the ones that I made up to remember what happens when you add an eyeball to another monograph and you build on your knowledge as you go. Once you've practiced this method and are comfortable enough to create these kinds of visualizations on your own, you could probably memorize the entire hiragana one pass through in about an hour or two and then practice spaced repetition to intelligently review 
only as much as needed. In under a week, you would have it down like the back of your hand. This, in fact, is very similar to the methodology that I've used to learn both the Cyrillic and the cursive version of the Russian alphabet and the way that I often teach others to learn the Hebrew alphabet as well. So that is, in my professional opinion, the fastest and most powerful method for learning the hiragana or anything else for that matter. Now, if you still aren't 100% clear on how to apply this method, that is completely understandable. It is a lot to take in. To start getting a better handle on how to actually use this method for anything and everything you want to learn, make sure to hit that subscribe button below and check out some of our other helpful, completely free videos here on YouTube. Also, if you'd like to get a checklist of my top 75 superhuman hacks for your mind and body, just go ahead and visit jle.vi slash gift or visit the link in the description. That'll make it a lot easier. There, you'll also learn how you can join in on a 100% completely free one-hour introductory training seminar with yours truly. I really hope to see you there.